Namaste. So I'm happy to report that I got my groove back. There was something bugging me that's been bugging me for like 38 years. <laughs> a missing piece of the puzzle, a missing link or a missing object in my model. And I finally was able to resolve this doubt with the help of Shankaracharya's commentary on the Katha Upanishad. So, not to get ahead of the story in the Katha Upanishad series, because it comes at the very, very end of the last chapter. Uh, but if you want to go looking for it, that's where it is. And the nature of the doubt or the missing piece of information uh, the missing piece of the model was something that we've discussed actually several times. And that is when you're in deep meditation and you go deep into emptiness, sushupti, and then a blindingly bright light spontaneously manifests, what is that light? Huh? At first I thought, oh, this is Brahman. But then after studying uh, Advaita, Ramana Maharshi's teaching, I realized that's not possible because Brahman is only subjective. It's never perceived. It's only the perceiver. Drishya Vivekaha. Huh? It's only the drik, the seer. It's never drishya, the seen. So what is that then? Well, I had to go deep into Shankaracharya's commentary to understand that Brahman has two parts, a superior part and an inferior part. The superior part is the unconditioned Brahman, which is always subjective, never objective. In other words, it's never the seen, it's always the seer. And more than that, the inferior Brahman is subject to conditioning by various, well, in the first place, forms of consciousness. And we're going to go over that in a minute how this completes the model of the four states of consciousness. So, what I was seeing in deep meditation was not the superior Brahman, which is the self, which is myself, yourself, the self of every living creature, but the inferior Brahman, Shakti, that uh, which is subject to conditioning or the application of upadis. Upadis are coverings that give uh, the Brahman the uh, appearance of a conditioned object. But of course, Brahman is never conditioned, <laughs> only apparently. And this is one of the great mysteries. This is a mystery that is so deep that even the Vedas don't attempt to touch it. In fact, they say that Maya is inexplicable. Inexplicable. Don't even ask. It can't be explained. Why would Brahman, the one, the unconditioned, split itself into two, Shiva and Shakti, or the superior and inferior Brahman? And why would he have the inferior Brahman cover herself with various uh, coverings? Who knows? Huh? Who can explain it? So the only answer is to realize Brahman and play with it. So maybe that's the answer. It's just for play. But in any case, now we're very happy to say 
that our model of consciousness and self-realization is fully complete. There are no missing parts. There's nothing uh, vague or uh, unclear about it. Uh, it's fully complete and fully functional. And this is a model that you can use in your approach to self-realization. And that's really the whole point. This gives you the structure of consciousness that you can climb one step at a time until you reach full self-realization. So you saw in the lead-in, in the introduction to the video, some graphics, and now we're going to explore the meaning of those graphics. First is Jagrat, or waking consciousness. And this is the consciousness that most people are in most of the time. It's the consciousness that I'm in making this video and that you are in watching it. The object of Jagrat consciousness is things. The material world is seen as real. The material body, material actions, and so on are seen as actually existing. This view is called Dvaitavada, or duality view. And uh, it really means that there are different things and they're all real and they interact in certain lawful ways and one can know these ways and thereby advance in consciousness. And this is called yoga. And the specific type of yoga is karma yoga or religious sacrifice. That is performance of rituals and rites based on the Vedic literatures leading to uh, good karma, subha karma, or punya, auspiciousness. And this leads to the destination of a pious human birth, birth in a Brahmana family, or lower heavenly planets, where you go for some time until the results of your pious actions are exhausted, and then you come back again and take a very high human birth fitting you for self-realization. Now the next stage of consciousness is called Svapna. And Svapna is dreaming consciousness. It's the consciousness that we experience when we're thinking or when we're visualizing something, when we're acting in creativity, or we are trying to understand things by visualizing them mentally. So in the object, we have the mental world, the world as thoughts. In other words, the world exists, but our ideas about the world shape what we see. And certainly we've all experienced this, not only in dreams, but in waking consciousness, when we think the world is one way, but then it turns out to be something different <laughs> in reality. And on the other hand, the way we look at the world profoundly shapes our experience of it and our possibilities, our potentialities, and what we can attain. And the yoga in this consciousness is bhakti yoga, or devotion to the supreme, where one chooses a metaphor or an image or a personality of the supreme and worships him or her or it according to the instructions in the scriptures, and then reaches a spontaneous level of love where one goes beyond the scriptures, and this becomes a creative exercise in devotion that is completely unique and original to each devotee. This is the perfection of bhakti, and its destination is the higher heaven or liberation, mukti. Mukti means having a relationship with God in a certain form, in a certain emotion, rasa. Next is sushupti, or deep sleep consciousness. The object of sushupti consciousness is shunyata, emptiness, nothingness, the void. And this view is called vivartavada. The world is an illusion. It's not real. It only exists for a certain time, and then it goes away. So how can we say that it exists at all? It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And most of the time, it doesn't exist. 
It only exists when we create it by looking in a certain way. This yoga is called Raja Yoga. And the essence of Raja Yoga is neti neti. Not this, not this, not this, not this. Rejecting all the phenomena that appear as illusion or maya because they're temporary, imperfect, and not self nature. This consciousness leads to the destination of enlightenment or liberation, where we become free from the illusions of the material existence. And finally, there's Turiya consciousness, Brahman consciousness, where the object is the inferior Brahman or Shakti. The subject, of course, is the superior Brahman or Shiva. Shiva, Ham, Aham Brahmasmi. See, these uh, Mahavakyas apply to this state of consciousness, Turiya, the fourth. The view in Turiya is called Ajatavada, the world as non-existent. Ajata means unborn. The world is simply Maya. It doesn't really exist. And the yoga is Jnana Yoga, the yoga of self-realization, realizing that I am Brahman only. Everything else is simply illusion. And the destination of one in this state of consciousness is that he's already liberated. If you can reach Turiya consciousness, that's it. That's the end of the path. Now, in the few minutes remaining here, I want to talk about how my experience of enlightenment back in 1984 is now complete. Because then, what I experienced was that Shakti came in to the, to the room and touched me on the forehead, gave me Shaktipat. And at that point, I saw Brahman in the world and the world in Brahman. And what was really happening is that my own Shakti, the inferior Brahman, was revealing because she had become favorably inclined towards me by my practice of bhakti. And she was showing how the inferior Brahman becomes covered by Upadi. And that when these Upadis are removed, or at least weakened, the underlying unconditioned nature of the Supreme Brahman shines through. Or another way to look at it is that the Supreme Brahman the superior Brahman is reflected in the inferior Brahman. But because it's a reflection, it can become covered by Upadis. And so the Upadi of Ishatvam then creates the illusion of the existence of a personal God. And the covering the Upadi of Jivatvam creates the illusion of a conditioned being who is subject to birth and death. Sangsara, and so on. And there are many, many objects in the world, and they are all simply Brahman covered by Upadis. And this is exactly what I saw in my vision. I mean, it wasn't a vision. It was directly seeing. I wasn't in any kind of trance. I was wide awake. <laughs> so, at the realization of the reality of what actually happened, what is it going on 39 years ago now? All of this has come back to me. And I am now again situated on that platform. But the difference is, in those days I had an experience, but I had no knowledge. Now I have both the knowledge and the experience. You see, the removal of Upadis is the removal of ignorance, and ignorance is not knowing. So once you hear this teaching and you know the truth, then automatically, by simply becoming situated in that truth, one moves from conditioned consciousness automatically to liberated consciousness. And that is the completion of self-realization, 
Adhyatma Yoga. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>